All right, let's jump in um, to this diversity industrial complex. There's a new one. Uh, diversity, the, 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 uh, we, we've heard about the defense industrial, you know, the, 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 the military industrial complex. But now we have a diversity industrial complex. I guess this term was coined by uh, actually a guy I don't like, but he's written about this topic. So he's the guy I'm citing, Chris Rufo, because he, he works for a despicable organization called, uh, uh, called the Discovery Institute that uh, does work to disprove the theory of evolution. There's, there's no more work for you. Let's prove that God created human beings and that there's no evolution. I mean, even the religious Jews know that that's BS, and at least they have to integrate the theory of evolution into their view of God rather than these Christian nuts who think that, uh, that uh, they can prove intelligent design. And uh, it's it just bizarre. Anyway, Chris Rufo works for the Discovery Institute. I'll just note that. He is the guy that, I guess, broke the story about, uh, about the uh, diversity industrial pro- uh, uh, um, in, uh, diversity industrial complex, which is a massive exaggeration, but a great, uh, a great slogan. Um, and, but, uh, but an interesting story and a really scary story, uh, if to the extent that it is true, and, and I have no doubt that it is. It just makes complete sense to me that it, it, this, is, uh, this is absolutely, absolutely, um, absolutely true. So you can find the story about this. I mean, it's probably all over the place, but uh, the story I, I refer to is in the City Journal, uh, city journal city slash journal dot org uh, sorry by Christopher F. Rufo it's called uh, profiteering race theorists expand their footprint in the federal government and it turns out shockingly that uh, this critical race theory this white fragility this BS that I've talked about for a long time now uh, about uh, the racism of the left the idea that race is important that race matters that race is I- extraordinarily important and then indeed, uh, by the very definition of the fact that you're white, you're guilty of racism, you're guilty of kind of implicit racism, and that if you don't devote your life to what is called anti-racist, which is not be- just being against racism as we understand it, that is treating people based on race rather than based on their character, that is not what the racists talk about. It's not treating blacks as blacks. That is considered racist now. So they've got racism upside down. Indeed, for them, the, the racism is um, the right. Ra- racism involves not being a racist, and not being a racist involves being a racist. It's just it's bizarre, right? If you treat people as members of a race, you're not a racist, according to them. If you don't treat people based on their race, if you just treat them as individuals, then you're a racist. So it's got the whole thing upside down. Uh, it's it's truly is, um, it truly is you know bizarre and and uh, um, evil, evil, because it's destroying the concept of race, which is it's destroying the concept of racism, not the concept of race. Race should be destroyed. It's destroying the concept of racism in the name of collectivism, in the name of racism. And as you know, Ayn Rand considered racism the lowest form of collectivism. I consider racism to be one of the most despicable sets of ideas possible. And, uh, and, and these people of the left are racists. So they've taken this critical race theory. They've taken this racist ideology, white fragility, the idea that all whites are guilty, the idea that whites have to actively work uh, to deal with this and that the only really way to deal with it is to work to dismantle what's called systemic racism and the only way to work to dismantle systemic racism is to really work to dismantle the american system of government to work to dismantle the american constitution to work to dismantle capitalism property rights rule of law that is the only way to get rid of capitalism to get rid of racism according to critical race theory is to get rid of capitalism. It's to get rid of individual rights. It's to get rid of property rights. I mean, I can't think of a more kind of uh, disgusting theory. Frank says Hegelianism run amok. Absolutely, this is kind of a Hegelian, you know, uh, uh, filled with contradictions, but that's what Hegel relished. Uh, Nonsensical, uh, gibberish, but at the core, anti-individual, 
and what it, what really is driving this is is the hatred of the individual, hatred of individual rights, hatred of individual success, hatred of individual property, hatred of everything, anything, individual. You are a member of the collective, and what they want is collectives to be treated equally. And in order to get to the point where collectives are treated equally, one has to elevate one collective more than the other for now because all these years the one collective has been diminished more than the others. So whites have had a what they call a privileged position, and therefore in order to fix this, we have to devalue whites and we have to elevate minorities in order to achieve a new balance. But it's all about elevating and, and raising and reducing the group and the thing that they hate the most, the thing that offends them the most, the thing that they fight against the most is the individual, is what makes this country and has always made this country unique. That is the concept of an individual coded into the law, coded into a system of government that protects the individual as the smallest minority, that protects the individual because the individual has rights and only individuals has rights. Here they want to completely obliterate the concept of the individual. Therefore, there is no such thing, for example, as individual racism. It's all about you as a member of a group. It's all about them as members of group. It's all about the membership of the group. It has nothing to do with you as an individual. So they've been teaching this theory uh, now for, for a couple of decades, at least, on American universities. And we're seeing the consequence of that, uh, I think, in the riots, in BLM, in, in, um, in, in what has been happening on campuses over the last decade or so. Uh, you know, this has been taught at corporations. I talked about that, uh, that, that corporations are bringing in the author of White Fragility to teach this stuff, and she's making a fortune. Uh, teaching seminars on on uh, how whites should feel guilty and how they they should destroy capitalism and how they should diminish themselves and how diminish their group. Remember, it's all about the group, not them as individuals. Um, and uh, <coughs> no, Michael, I haven't gotten to, to Powell. Powell will come after this topic. And now it turns out uh, that over the last you know almost decade, <coughs> they have been teaching this at the federal government, and they've been teaching this to the federal government, and very likely in the military, and they brought these uh, crazy nutty, crazy nutty is too nice, evil ideas into the federal government, where they're teaching basically the dismantling of the American system, and the dismantling of capitalism, dismantling the American system of government to the people responsible for the American system of government, to the people managing, if you will, the bureaucracy that is our government. Uh, and, uh, and they've been doing this... Uh, They've been doing this through seminars, through uh, seminars for profit, and that's why it's called, uh, that's why Chris Rufo has, has, uh, has, has coined this term, um, the diversity industrial complex. And it turns out that uh, these seminars are being given in the Treasury Department, the Federal Reserve, the FDIC, the uh, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. This is just recently the National Federal Union. So it's all the finance, all the real cap, you know, the ones responsible for regulating capital markets, regulating the, the most essential feature of capitalism. Uh, it's the distribution of capital. Uh, and they've been, they've been having these seminars about white fragility, a white whiteness, about white privilege, uh, about this despicable theory and how all of these people should, should apologize, basically, and feel guilty for being white. Um, you know, the idea here is virtually all white people contribute to racism by the very fact that they're white, not by any individual action, because individual action doesn't matter. All that matters is that you belong to, right? Why is it called industrial? You know, again, it's a, coin, a term he coined. It's called industrial because the guy makes a lot of money at it. So he names the guy, it's somewhere in this, Ross, some, somebody Ross, who, who's uh, billed the government over $5 million. Um, yeah, $3 million for consulting services. Um, in, in 2011 alone. So this has been going on actually for 15 years. This has been going on since 2006. Um, it's billed the federal government more than $5 million for diversity training seminars and materials. The biggest year was 2011. Uh, this has been done in NASA where he billed them $500,000 for power and privilege sexual orientation workshops. So remember that I don't know when this started, but years and years ago, decades ago, 
the whole idea of um, sexual harassment, uh, racial harassment on the workplace started, and all corporations started bringing in sexual harassment, workplace harassment, um, uh, racial sensitivity training. All these trainings started coming in, and they were required. So we at the Einman Institute had to, by law in California, do one of these harassment seminars. And I, you know, I remember we hired some lawyers that did a kind of a half-assed job at it. I mean, some of it is legit and some of it's complete BS. And, and uh, so they did the legal aspects of it, which was useful for our staff to know because nobody wants to get into trouble with this. But you had to do it. You had to literally sign off that you had done it. Otherwise, the state would come after you. So it's not surprising that these seminars were brought into the government. And initially, I'm sure they were the same kind of thing, mainly focusing on the legal issues around sexual harassment, workplace harassment, uh, you know, discrimination, things like that. But these consultants are cutting edge. They probably stayed up with the latest academic literature about these issues, the latest thinking in academia. And slowly, these things evolved to the most radical, nutty, crazy, bizarre stuff that is today, this whole white fragility uh, stuff that is going on. Um, and indeed, according to this article, according to this article, and I'm quoting, and, and again, this is written by uh, Chris Rufo at the City Journal, who is a, uh, a, a uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, Evolution-denying conservative. Uh, he writes, so this is not some leftist writing this. This is, this is on the right. He says, incredibly, Ross, this is the guy who runs these seminars, and his like-minded colleagues, and there are many of them, this is the industrial complex, have expanded their footprint under the conservative Trump administration. I don't know that Trump administration is conservative, but anyway, uh, people in the Trump administration certainly are conservative. Based on a review of federal contract data, since Trump's inauguration, Ross has conducted at least 17 trainings for federal agencies, including the Department of Justice, the National Institute of Health, the Office of the Attorney General. The, and uh, he, he says, um, so this has been going on throughout the Trump administration, has been accelerating, uh, and the idea is uh, to convert everyone in the federal government to the work of anti-racism. And we know that anti-racism is not only an anti-concept, it is an evil anti-concept. It's focusing, again, not to create colorblindness, but rather to dismantle the American system of government, to dismantle capitalism, whatever remnants still exist of capitalism in America. Uh, of course, it, it goes beyond this because Ross, at the end of all of his training, and I'm sure all, all the trainers do this, they encourage the employees to take their training home to discuss this stuff with their children. So uh, he says that racism takes shape in our brains around three years old. So you want to get them when they're young to make sure that your kids don't become racist. <laughs> it, it, it truly is unbelievable. So anyway, this, it turns out, has all been happening under Trump's administration's uh, nose uh, for the last four years. So today, Trump announced, I guess today, that uh, he is banning these seminars, that he is uh, stopping them from being held, that he's uh, withholding funding. It's hard to tell with these executive orders whether they're applicable, whether they can actually be imposed, whether they actually work. I don't know. But, um, but you know, Trump has basically stopped this today from happening. You know, you almost think that this story broke to give Trump another uh, another uh, campaign election talking point, because this is the kind of stuff that really rails, rails uh, his voters up and really gets people excited and might get people on the fence to go on Trump rather than the other side. And it gives him a great opportunity to show that he is fighting for the good cause. And anyway, so today he uh, withdrew funding. But th this is... This is not surprising to me. I mean, some people are shocked that this is happening in our government. I mean, it's not surprising at all. It, it's, it completely makes sense to me. It's, it's you know, you, you cannot escape the consequences of the latest trends in academia. You cannot escape what is being taught at our universities. You cannot escape uh, what the activists are doing. You cannot escape the weakness of the American political system, left and right, to stand up 
to these crazy ideas. You cannot escape the fact that the American government, Congress, both under Republicans and Democrats, have passed all kinds of so-called anti-discrimination laws that have required all this kind of training at the federal government and have given these wackos a, a foot in the door. And I'm sure that these people, like, like this Ross, who's billed the government millions of dollars, is probably not initially one of the wackos. He probably just came in to do regular kind of training and then has become more recognized because it's cooler, it's hipper, it's, it's more within his field, it's the cutting edge, and, and he does it. Um, and it makes him money because the federal government has an infinite amount of money to spend so that it is incredibly profitable for these people to continue doing this and to continue to promoting this garbage within the federal government. So it doesn't shock me at all that it just shows the impact of anything that's happening at the universities. It shows the importance of our intellectuals. It shows the importance of combating uh, intellectuals. It shows that even if you even if you have a president who objects to these ideas, it doesn't matter because the bureaucracy does it anyway. So even though you had Trump in the White House, um, these ideas all over the federal government because somebody puts them in there and, and he partially he doesn't care, partially he's not watching over all the bureaucrats and his people are not watching over all the bureaucrats. Although you'd think that the heads of the, of the different agencies, like Mnuchin would know what's happening in the Treasury Department. You'd think that the different heads of the regulatory agencies would know what's happening in their little thing. But maybe they just don't want to rock the boat. And maybe the fact is that they're required to have some diversity training and they're required to have some anti-racist training. And, you know, what do they know about what's appropriate and what's inappropriate? They don't think about it. This is the importance. This is the importance of the intellectuals. This is the importance of having the intellectual high ground. This is the importance of why what really matters is not what happens in the White House. What really matters is not what happens in Congress or in the bureaucratic agencies. What really matters is what happens at the universities. And, and what really need, where the battle really lies is the intellectual battle. The battle really lies is reading books like White Fragility and shredding it and shredding it on a bigger and bigger and bigger stage and ultimately getting intellectuals who disagree with White Fragility to speak up to write books against it, to write articles against it, to appear on television against it, to give voice to all the poor souls who have to sit through these seminars who are thinking, no, 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 this can't be right. This is complete garbage. But hey, this is, this is what the, these PhDs think and nobody's speaking up against it. And that's how it becomes this part of the culture. It's our job as intellectuals to speak up against it. This is what we must do. This is what we must constantly do all the time. Uh, and this is why I do what I do. This is why I encourage other intellectuals to do what they do. And this is why I think it's so important for the Ayn Rand Institute to be talking about these, these issues in the intellectual landscape, both uh, the, the corruption of reason, rationality, capitalism, egoism on the left and on the right. It's important for us to present an alternative, a rational alternative to bring reason to the conversation. And that's how we'll get the better people on our side. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show 
at yourunbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you, even if you just come here to troll or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified, right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please. <laughs>